Now we talk about the vertebrates. Vertebrates, the animals which have a vertebral column. Actually, vertebrates have three major characteristics. That is, they do have a notochord. Actually, notochord is a harder structure which makes the vertebral column. They have a hollow dorsal nerve cord which runs in the vertebral column. And uh, they do have pharyngeal slits, sometimes called gill slits, at any stage of their life. We classify vertebrates into five major classes called fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and the mammals. We talk about them one by one, their characteristics and their importance. First of all, we talk about the fishes. Fishes are the aquatic animals. These are present in um, fresh waters. These are present in marine waters. These are present sometimes in ponds. These are present in lakes. These are present in rivers, in streams, in oceans, seas, even in the frozen seas. These are present in almost all types of water bodies. Fishes are of uh, two major kinds. They may be cartilaginous. They have a softer skeleton and they may be bony. They have a more hard bony skeleton. Fishes, they have some specific characteristics. We can call them adaptations. They have a five-chambered heart which is a single circuit heart because heart actually pumps blood towards the gills and then towards the body and then blood comes back to heart. We call it a single circuit heart. Then they have gills for respiration. For their respiratory gas exchange, they, because they are aquatic, they have to live in the water. They have specific organs called gills. Uh, gills are rich in capillaries and when the blood flows through these capillaries, uh, to, uh, uh, and through the gills, which are um, flooded with water, the gas exchange occur. The fishes, um, they produce usually large number of eggs um, and they do not provide uh, parental care to their young ones. Uh, fish, they have, uh, though, though some fish uh, do it, but most of the fish, they do not provide uh, a particular parental care, but for uh, its compensation, they produce a large number of eggs. They are categorized among the animals called ectotherms, that is, who cannot maintain their body temperature uh, when there is a change in the environmental temperature. If they maintain it, they maintain it with the help of some behavioral uh, uh, mean, that is, uh, moving from the colder water to the warmer water or uh, vice versa. Um, these animals, uh, the fishes, uh, they also have appendages, which are called fins. Fins are the structures uh, which are extended from various body parts in different ways, in different types of uh, fishes. Um, and these uh, structures actually help them in swimming and directioning, that is changing their direction or so, and swimming in the water. Fish are cultured in pounds and uh, in uh, different uh, parts of the different types of like lakes and other bo water bodies for the purpose of making protein based food because fish protein is categorized in uh, one of the best protein uh, source available on earth. So fishes are very useful for us because they can provide us with a good pro uh, source of protein in uh, the foods and uh, um, as we know that uh, many of the people, they make their fish farms and in which they grow some specific types of fishes uh, whose uh, meat makes a more good protein and they can grow, maybe they can grow fast and there are different types of techniques which are utilized to uh, increase the production of the fishes. Second important thing is this, that uh, the fishing industry um, also actually produce different types of products. That is, uh, we use the fish mussels actually as the protein source, that is for as food. But there are a lot many other parts of the fish, um, uh, which we know their scales and their um, other body parts, their fats, they are there. And these things are used to make different types of products, which we call byproducts of the fishing industry. So fishing industry is one of the uh, most important um, benefit of the fishes um, to the human beings. There are different types of fishes present on earth called like, um, you know, rohu is a very common fish which is edible, which is uh, usually uh, we eat it. There are carps, 
which also grow very well. There are also large fishes, which are even carnivore, and sometimes they even eat upon, they can eat upon human beings, the sharks. There are some specific types of fishes called rays. Some of the rays are called electric rays because they can produce an electric current, and that electric current is enough to kill a human beings. Some fishes they are very very large. Some fishes are very very small. We also uh, culture fishes for ornamental purposes. We know that uh, we usually keep aquaria in our drawing rooms or in uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, public places, which actually adds the uh, beauty of that place, adds to the beauty of that place. So there are many beautiful species of fishes, small fishes usually, uh, that we culture for ornamental purposes. There are uh, some very human friendly fishes like dolphin, it's very very common fish. Uh, the human children of the human and even adults like to play with the dolphins and they are very human friendly. So fishes are a very diverse group which have different types of characteristics and different types of benefits to the human beings. Now we talk about amphibians. Amphibians, they are called a transition between the aquatic and terrestrial life. Amphibians includes the frogs, the toads, salamanders and different organisms. These are also categorized in the ectothermic animals. That is, they do not produce usually endogenous heat, that is heat from inside of uh, their body by the metabolic reactions. They also warm up uh, themselves if, if needed uh, with the help of external factors. Now, the amphibians, they have usually a four-chambered heart which is not, pro whose, whose two chambers called ventricles are not properly separated. They are mix so the blood which is oxygenated and the blood which is deoxygenated mixes up but they do have a double circuit heart that is the heart receives blood from the body and it sends blood towards the lungs the amphibians they respire through lungs uh, in their adult life most of the, the part of their um, uh, life is uh, in on, on terrestrial that is on land they have lungs for respiration but for many times they go to water for example for reproduction they have to go to the water. They adapted certain mechanisms. They carry out cutaneous respiration. That is, their skin is actually richly supplied with blood vessels and uh, a gas exchange could occur um, uh, with the, this, these, through these capillaries, in skin and with the water. So we say that they carry out a cutaneous respiration, respiration through skin. Amphibians, they actually go to water to reproduce. They produce large number of eggs, sometimes even thousands of eggs. They lay eggs in the water and uh, these eggs, they are for after some time of development converted into larvae. Larvae are aquatic structures. They, or we can say aquatic form of these organisms, they always live in water. They are voracious feeders, they eat a lot. Um, and we know that a lot many of these larvae actually eat upon the uh, mosquito larvae which are present nearby. These larvae have gills for respiration because they live in water, they have gills, external gills. When they grow up and uh, they we call uh, by a process called metamorphosis, when they grow up and they are becoming the adults, they start losing their gills and they depend upon uh, the lungs for their, for their respiration. Frogs are very important because actually the amphibians uh, they are very important because they also make a very important part of the food chain. They eat upon lot many of insects. We know that larvae, uh, for example, we know that larvae of frogs, um, they grow in different types of water bodies. And we know that larvae of different insects, particularly mosquitoes, also grow in the same bodies, in water bodies like pounds, in the same season. And the larvae of the frogs, they eat upon the larvae of the mosquitoes. So actually they reduces the number of mosquitoes to be produced by those larvae. So they are helpful for human beings and other organisms. If there are frog larvae, they will eat upon the mosquito larvae and number of mosquitoes will be reduced. If there are less frog larvae, they will um, of course will eat upon less mosquito larvae and mosquito population will increase. So they are very important part of the food chains and the webs uh, of different ecosystems. Now we talk about the next group called reptiles. The reptiles, these are also 
ectotherms, previously called cold-blooded animals. Reptiles are a diverse group of organisms which are actually adapted to tolerate the harsh environments, mostly the dry and humid environments. Reptiles are, though very common inhabitants of uh, almost all the ecosystems, but particularly they thrive, that is, they grow very well in the deserts, which are dry, humid environments. We know there are different types of lizards, snakes, chameleons, turtles, tortoises. They grow well in um, various harsher environments, particularly in the deserts. They have a four-chambered heart and uh, two chambers are totally divided and the other two chambers, uh, the ventricles, they are though divided, but there is a small septum. There is a small uh, part, the lower part, which remains and which is not actually separated by this, the, the, the division or the septum of the um, ventricles. So some part of their blood mixes up with each other. That is deoxygenated and oxygenated. They also have a double circuit heart. That is, their uh, heart actually receives blood from the body and send blood towards the lungs to oxygenate it. And from the body, they receive actually the blood which is deoxygenated. So they have a double circuit heart. For respiration, they use his lungs um, because they are uh, more precisely land animals. Uh, they use his lungs for their respiration, for the gas exchange. They also uh, produce large number of, uh, usually large number of young ones. And um, no, usually and normally they do not provide uh, a parental care to those organisms to compensate those, that is to continue their race they produce a lot many um, young ones. Uh, there are a lot many uh, reptiles which are very important for us. Like for example, these lizards, chameleons, turtles, tortoises, they are very important parts of the food chains and food webs of different ecosystems. Snakes, we know that um, snakes uh, could be very highly poisonous. They can kill different types of uh, animals and even they can kill the human beings. But there are certain snakes which are not poisonous and they uh, feed upon the insect pests, uh, the pests, different types of pests present in our crops like rats, they eat upon the rats and they are not poisonous, they eat upon the insects um, and this is how they help in uh, say saving our crops from the pests. But we cannot easily identify that whether a snake uh, is, it is poisonous or not. But we know that snake venom, uh, that snake venom is actually used to make different types of medicines and particularly the treatment for the snake venom itself. Um, so snake venom is also important for uh, an important thing for us because we use it in different types of uh, medicines and treatment for snake venom itself from us. Um, some frogs, um, the amphibians are also poisonous. Uh, some amphibians also have poisons and some um, uh, African frogs are that much poisonous that their poison can kill human beings and the, uh, even a horse. So uh, the amphibians and reptiles, they are very important part of the ecosystems and sometimes they are harmful or they are harmless for us, uh, but indirectly um, sometimes they are um, useful for us. Like um, Snake venom is used for making medicines. Here you can see different types of reptiles. A turtle, you can see a lizard, a very poisonous snake, and you can see an alligator. 